Specific change in the environment evokes an appropriate response in all living organisms in the form of movement or action. Animals perform three types of actions. Reflex action is an involuntary and nearly instantaneous movement in response to a stimulus. Involuntary action which are not performed by conscious choice of organism. Voluntary action, these are performed by conscious choice of animals. In this module, we will learn about the reflex action in detail. Reflex action. The word reflex means sudden action in response to something in the environment. For example, when you touch a flame, you pull back your hand instantaneously. Without thinking, when you are hungry and see some food, your mouth starts watering. Such a spontaneous, automatic and mechanical response to a stimulus Acting on a specific receptor without the will of an animal is called reflex action. Reflex action mechanism In reflex action, fine tips that is dendrites of receptors that is sensory neurons quickly relay a message in the form of electric impulse via sensory nerves to the spinal cord. The spinal cord then sends information, impulse, via motor nerves to effectors that is muscles or gland. The reflex actions generally involve spinal cord for quick response to specific stimulus or otherwise the thinking process of brain may take time and delay the response which may harm the animal. However, information input also goes on to reach the brain where thinking process occurs. The path taken by this inner reflex action is called reflex arc. When our hand accidentally touches a hot object, the heat is sensed by thermoreceptors present in the skin of hands. The receptors trigger nerve impulses in sensory neurons. Sensory neurons transmit the message to the spinal cord. In spinal cord, impulse is passed on to the interneurons which in turn pass it to the motor neurons. The motor neurons transmit the instruction to the muscles in our arm. The arm muscles contract and pull our hand away from the hot object. This is also referred as spinal reflex. Reflex arcs have evolved in animals because the thinking process of the brain is relatively slow. Reflex arcs have evolved as an efficient way of functioning in the absence of true thought processes. There are some reflexes which involve brain as well. They are termed as cerebral reflexes, for example salivation at the sight or smell of food. Contraction of pupil of human eye in the presence of light. Significance of reflex action. 1. It avoids overloading of brain. 2. It results in quick response otherwise the thinking process of brain may take time and delay the response which may harm the animal. The brain. Part 1. The brain is the broadest and uppermost part of the central nervous system. It is the highest coordinating center of the body. The brain is a soft whitish organ that weighs 1.2 to 1.4 kgs and forms about 98% of the weight of the whole central nervous system. It has about 100 billion neurons. 
brain is situated in the cranial cavity of the skull present in the head region of the body. The bones of the cranium or the brain box protect this delicate organ from mechanical injury. Brain is surrounded by three membranes called meninges which provide protection to it. The space between these three meninges is filled with cerebrospinal fluid which protects the brains from mechanical shocks. The Brain Part 2 Brain is divided into three main regions. Forebrain Midbrain Hindbrain Forebrain it forms the greatest part of the brain and is the main thinking part. It has regions which receive sensory impulses from various receptors. It further consists of three regions. The first region is olfactory lobes. These are the parts of the forebrain which are involved with the perception of smell. The second region is cerebral hemisphere or cerebrum. It forms the longest part of the brain. Each cerebrum is divided into four lobes. Frontal lobe, the region for speech, facial muscular activities as well as higher mental activities. Temporal lobe, the region for auditory reception, Hearing. Occipital lobe, the region for visual reception, sight. Varietal lobe, the region for touch, taste, smell, temperature, and conscious association. Each lobe has some areas called association areas which store information and experiences and control thinking, memory, learning and emotions. Third part of more brain is diencephalons. It is the posterior part of the forebrain that connects the midbrain with the cerebral hemispheres and contains the thalamus and the hypothalamus. It is also called as between brain or interbrain. Diencephalons controls and maintains hunger, thirst, fatigue, sleep, body temperature, sweating, emotions, etc. It also secretes neurohormones which regulate the secretions of pituitary gland. The Brain Part 3 Second part of the brain is midbrain. It's a significantly small region and controls reflex movements of the head, the neck and the trunk in response to visual and auditory stimuli and also controls the eye muscles, changes in pupil size as well as the shape of the eye lens. Third part of the brain is hindbrain. The hindbrain consists of three parts, cerebellum, pons, medulla oblongata. Cerebellum is the second largest part of the brain. It maintains posture, equilibrium, muscle tone. Pons control some aspects of respiration. Medulla oblongata controls rate of heartbeat, breathing movements, expansion and contraction of blood vessels to regulate blood pressure, swallowing, coughing, sneezing and vomiting. So we see human brain is a very important part of our central nervous system, CNS and 
allows us to think and take actions based on thinking. You all must have seen the touch me not plant. A very interesting thing about this plant is that when its leaves are touched, the leaves begin to fold up and drop. Also, when a seed germinates, the root so formed gets embedded in the soil away from the light and the stem part comes up in the air towards the light. Unlike animals, plants do not have a nervous system, muscles and sense organs. But they can respond and react to various environmental stimuli such as light, gravity, water, touch, chemicals, In fact, show two different types of movements in response to various stimuli. One type of movements are independent of growth and other type of movements are dependent on growth. Both these types of movements are affected by the action of plant hormones, phytohormones. Plants coordinate their responses against environmental stimuli by using the hormones. Plants slowly respond to various stimuli through revealing growth. As a result, the response of plants to various stimuli cannot be observed immediately. Types of Plant Movement According to the nature of stimulus, plant movements are of two types. One, Nastic movements to tropic movements. Nastic movements. These are non directional induced variation movements that occur due to turgor changes, as in the case of Dutch Me Not plant. These movements reveal the immediate response to stimulus, however, these do not involve growth. Tropic movement or tropism. Tropic movements are the induced growth movements of curvature that occur due to differential growth. These are directional movements or orientations that occur in response to external stimuli such as light, force of gravity, chemicals, water, etc. Let us understand tropism in detail. If the movement of the plant's path is towards the stimulus, it is termed as positive tropism. If the movement of the plant's part is away from the stimulus, it is termed as negative tropism. Types of Tropism There are four different types of tropism. 1. Phototropism It is the directional movement or orientation of the plant's part in response to light stimulus. If the plant's part moves towards the light, it is called positive phototropism. If the plant's part moves away from light, it is called negative phototropism. 2. Geotropism It is the directional movement or orientation of the plant part in response to gravity. If the plant's part moves in the direction of the gravity, it is called positive geotropism. Alternatively, if the plant's part moves against the direction of gravity, it is termed as negative geotropism. 3. Chemotropism It is the directional movement or orientation of the plant's part in response to chemical stimulus. If the plant's part moves towards the chemical stimulus, it is called positive chemotropism. On the other hand, if the plant's part moves away from the chemical stimulus, it is called negative chemotropism. 4. Hydrotropism It is the directional movement or orientation of the plant's part in response to water stimulus. If the plant's part moves towards the water stimulus, it is called positive hydrotropism. On the other hand, 
if the plant's part moves away from the water stimulus, it is called negative hydrotropism. Plant growth hormones. We know that plants coordinate their response against the environmental stimulus using hormones. These hormones are called plant hormones or phytohormones. Plant hormones or phytohormones are naturally occurring organic chemical substances present in plants which bring about control and coordination of various activities in them. They are therefore also known as plant growth substances. These phytohormones are synthesized in minute quantities in one part of the plant's body diffuse to another part where they influence specific physiological processes. There are five major types of phytohormones or plant growth substances which are involved in the control and coordination in plants. Auxins, Gibralins, Cytokinins, Abscisic Acid, Ethene, Ethylene. Auxins are synthesized at the shoot tip and help the cells to grow longer. When light is coming from one side of the plant, auxin diffuses towards the shady side of the shoot. This concentration of auxin stimulates the cells to grow longer on the side of the shoot which is away from light. Thus, the plant appears to bend towards light. These promote cell enlargement and cell differentiation in plants in the presence of auxins. These also promote growth in stems and fruits. These also induce parthenocarpy, that is, the formation of seedless fruits without fertilization in many plants. Cytokinins These promote cell division and occur in greater concentration in areas of rapid cell division such as in fruits and seeds. They help in breaking the dormancy in seeds and buds. These delay the aging in leaves and also promote the opening of stomata. Abscisic Acid It promotes the dormancy in seeds and buds and thereby inhibits growth. It also promotes the closing of stomata and thus affects wilting of leaves. It also promotes the falling of leaves, abscission. Ethene or Ethylene it promotes growth and ripening of fruits. It helps in breaking the dormancy in buds and seeds. It stimulates the formation of separation layer, abscission zone in leaves, flowers and fruits. It promotes yellowing of leaves. Photoperiodism The duration of sunlight also regulates germination of seeds and flowering in plants. The length of the day during which the sunlight is available to the plants is called photoperiod. Plants respond to photoperiod with the help of a special blue-green pigment called phytochrome pigment. It is present in very small amounts. The effect of photoperiod on the germination of seeds and flowering in plant is called photoperiodism. Thus plant hormones, phytohormones and phytochrome pigment together are involved in the control and coordination of plant responses.